welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There has been a strong focus on the further integration of gas into South Africa's energy mix over the past few weeks. Terence Creamer has been following the debates and discussions and joins me to speak about some of the emerging themes. Hi Terence. Hi. Why is gas moving up the energy agenda in South Africa? Well, I think there's a view that gas can play a much bigger role. We've, um, we've got a coal-heavy energy mix, about 95% of our electricity comes from coal. Quite a bit of our petrol also comes from coal from out of Cecil. And there's a view that uh, gas could be an important uh, bridge technology uh, as in terms of lowering our carbon emissions, as well as it provides baseload energy or, or mid-merit or peaking power uh, in cases where it's also needed. It's going to be switched on and off quite quickly. Also, these plants are fairly quick to build relative to a big coal-fired power station or a nuclear plant. The issue for South Africa is the w where is the gas? <coughs> and what has happened over the last uh, few decades is that we know that there have been major discoveries in, in Mozambique. We already at this stage um, import gas through the Sassel pipeline and that is, that is used in the uh, gas to liquids process to produce fuels and chemicals by Sassel and to a certain extent to produce electricity both by Sassel and now more and more we're seeing on the Mozambican side of the border there's also electricity production coming from the gas. But there's a view that there's also other gas around. Uh, on the west coast there have been some farms uh, offshore and then there's obviously this big uh, shale gas potential under the Karoo Basin. So there's a feeling that the, there are these gas, uh, there's gas potential. And then what we've had as well is, is in, in during this electricity uh, shortage period, uh, Eskom building these um, open cycle gas turbines, which are currently not gas fueled, they, they burn diesel uh, fuel. And those have become extremely expensive to operate as the South African rand has weakened, as the, as the fuel prices have increased. And uh, last year alone, Eskom spent over 10 billion rand last year to procure diesel, to, and which was burnt to keep the lights on, but was well ahead of the sort of operational parameters that were expected when they applied for um, their tariffs from NERSA. NERSA, I think, offered them around 2.5 billion rand a year in terms of diesel costs. That's really, they, they're well above that, at about 8 billion rand above that level. So Eskom is fairly desperate to convert those open cycle gas turbines to gas. And then we've got, so we've got this immediate expense that we want to try and mitigate. And then there's this view that gas can play a much bigger role, both in terms of the electricity uh, environment, and, uh, you know, bringing in a new capacity that's lower carbon emission, still fossil fuel, but with lower emissions. And uh, there's also this potential to go directly into households with gas for cooking. There's also the potential to do more transport fuels through gas to liquids processes. And what are some of the immediate and longer term prospects with regard to increasing the level of gas in South Africa's energy mix? Well, the immediate term, I think, has to be about importation. So we already, as I said, got the Sassel pipeline, and that's been uh, delivering for a number of years now. And the, there's some potential to increase that. And there's massive potential in northern Mozambique. Um, and I think we're seeing a lot more interest now about how to tap into those gas resources, not just as an export potential in the form of liquid, uh, um, liquefied natural gas, which would really go to Asia, but also maybe converting that gas in northern Mozambique into electricity and sending it down transmission lines into the region, or p uh, potentially even converting it into transport fuels through gas to liquid plants. So there's a lot of excitement around Mozambique. But then there's also the, the West Coast um, uh, and, so, um, and Southern Cape areas where the gas is needed. And um, we have this gas to liquids plant that Petrosa operates in Mossel Bay. That is short of gas. They have got other gas fields coming on um, in that area, but they are looking at uh, uh, supplementing that with imports of liquefied natural gas, LNG. So there's a, been a study for some time into an LNG import terminal in Mossel Bay that would service both the, uh, the refinery down there, the gas to liquids refinery, as well as the Harikwa open cycle gas turbine plant, which is operated by Eskim in the area. So that's a sort of a, those are two immediate, uh, more from Mozambique, more from uh, imports. 
And then maybe a little bit more medium term is exploiting what are some of the Western West Coast gas discoveries and building pipelines into the um, open cycle gas turbine at Ankerlich, um, which Eskim also operates to try and convert that. In the longer term, obviously, there's this whole shale gas potential. So there's obviously Mozambique, the offshore uh, conventional gas, but there's a view that, uh, well, government is pushing quite strongly that we need to move beyond the debates now and into the, the realm of uh, exploring what is under the crew basin and uh, seeing whether that can be turned into some sort of uh, account in terms of our energy economy, as well as in, in terms of potentially creating jobs and new economic activities in areas that don't really have them yet. There is strong opposition though uh, with regard to exploiting the shell gas. Can you discuss this? Yes, I think that opposition um, uh, has been around for a number of years, but it's really reviving itself again as it becomes more and more clear that government I intends to move ahead with licensing of exploration activity in the Karoo area. We saw the uh, anti-fracking alliance um, coming together, coming to the fore again in the last few days. It, it's led really by the Treasure the Karoo Action Group and AFRI Forum, but there's a, there's a broad grouping of uh, supporters of that anti-shell gas uh, campaign, whether it's religious groups or, uh, um, or civil society groups or unions, and even more interestingly recently, the Economic Freedom Fighters who have said that they have reservations around the shell gas. So there is this, uh, this group uh, strong pushback against uh, shell gas mining in the Karoo. And uh, they have gone about sending a letter to the president, uh, Jacob Zuma, as well as a number of his cabinet ministers, giving them some time to respond to their concerns, which they felt have not been addressed through this debate that we've had for the last three and a half years. There has been this process of building uh, or setting up regulations for the, the exploration and potentially the mining of shale gas in the crew, but there's still unhappiness with a lot of those elements. So I think there's a, there's a feeling amongst the opposition that they will not necessarily push against um, shell gas mining at all costs. Um, they, they will be, there's a sort of an air of reasonable, reasonableness, but they want to see some give from the side of the authorities around the way that mining takes place, the way that exploration licenses are framed, how tightly framed they are, um, are the chemicals that are used in the fracking process disclosed up front, those sort of things. And you can't just have a, a blanket area of uh, thousands of square kilometers that you can uh, potentially uh, explore in. You need to be very specific, for instance, in where you're going to put your well. So they have these, these sort of bottom lines that I think they're starting to outline and they've put that in a message to President Jacob Zuma and they're wanting him to respond. They've given him a 30 day period to respond if he fails to do that, they say they've got their legal resources and their legal teams working and they've got financial firepower to pursue legal action. And possibly what will trigger any legal action, it seems, is if there is that first license for exploration that's delivered um, to one of the uh, applicants. And then we could see a high court application to try and stop it. But I think there's, there's a sort of a feeling that maybe there's an opportunity to engage ahead of that process to put uh, firmer regulations in place to take account of some of the failings uh, around the shale energy mining that took place in other parts of the world and tighten up before we enter what is uh, also a very water scarce area of the Karoo. And that's the sort of key issue around shale mining in the Karoo and how we're going to manage that uh, clearly. So I think uh, there is this opposition, but there is this strong also intent that we're seeing both from government as well as from very strong applicants in the oil and in the energy sector that want to go ahead, not least now as well the state-owned companies. Petrosa has a shale energy strategy. We saw Eskom making an appeal to their minister to say that they also want to move into the upstream space, um, mostly to for their security supply needs. So I think there is this balance that needs to be struck, and it's going to be interesting to watch how that balance is struck in the South African context. That is the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.